Hello, my friends. Wild boars are becoming a serious problem for Texans. As millions of wild boars invade farms, damaging crops and threatening other animals. So how can we prevent these attacks? Let's watch the following video. Wild boars spread from 30 to 50 states in the U.S., especially in Texas, as in recent years, they have caused damage to crops and farms, affecting harvests and threatening agriculture. Texas farmers have chosen bow and arrow hunting to deal with the invasion of wild boars, and the results have been positive. Faced with a significant increase in the number of wild boars, they implemented a hunting plan to control the situation. Every time they go hunting, hunters move into the forest with careful preparation, bringing bows, arrows, bow strings, and some necessary amenities such as knives and food. They need precise hunting skills to avoid danger and effectively take down herds of wild boars. The correct aiming distance is about 20 to 30 feet, which is enough to ensure quick damage and kill the target. But did you know that hunters can not only take down wild boars with guns, it takes them a long time to practice and master professional skills. Have a certificate of hunting wild boar, but thanks to the efforts and perseverance of hunters, this measure has had a positive result. Thanks to the application of bows and arrows hunting techniques, the number of wild boars has decreased by 30% each year, helping to protect cornfields and reduce pressure on Texas farmers. This helps the economy stabilize food supplies and reduce crop protection costs. At the same time, it creates the potential to increase the corn export turnover of the state of Texas and increase the reliability of corn product quality. And before moving on to the next more interesting method, I'd like to ask if you're having difficulties dealing with the invasive wild boar species. If so, please leave a comment with the number one in the comment section. And now let's continue watching the rest of the solutions throughout the whole video. Besides using bows and arrows to hunt, 
Texas farmers also use traps to control wild boars. To set traps, they choose locations where wild boars are frequently active. Round iron traps are about 3 to 4 feet in diameter and the trap area is about 7 to 12 square feet. Traps are firmly installed into the ground, ensuring wild boars do not escape. Farmers often use an attractive bait to attract wild boars to the trap. One of the most popular baits is corn or grains. Natural or chemical scents can also be used to enhance the effectiveness of the lure. Each time it is activated, the trap will catch 10 to 15 wild boars. To know when wild boars are trapped, farmers often check periodically using tracks on the ground or camera systems. When wild boars are trapped, they will harvest them safely and effectively. This process not only helps control wild boars, but also protects other animals and helps stabilize farmers' income. And according to experienced hunters in trapping wild boars, the best time to trap wild boars is at night. As they often travel in groups to search for food, According to the recorded cameras, do you see that the number of wild boars at night is greater than during the day? The hunters told me that they felt happy when they were able to deal with twice the number of wild boars in one night. It was a night of them sleeping well. However, both approaches are supported by a large number of Texans. Many people think that hunting and trapping wild boars is inhumane, but farmers in Texas found a responsible and a reasonable solution after capturing them. So instead of exterminating them, they often transport captured wild boars to sanctuaries. Each time they are trapped, they are taken to conservation areas such as the East Texas Reservation or the Sam Houston Reservation, where they can live naturally without harming crops. To effectively control wild boar herds, New measures can be applied such as using satellite technology to monitor and predict areas where wild boars often operate, thereby focusing on control measures in these areas. Are you thinking like me, that moving them to a conservation area is the best solution? Here they live and grow naturally without causing harm to farmers. In particular, they do not have to worry about running away from farmers' hunts. From the above measures, farmers will no longer have to stay up at night to find and chase away wild boars. So the real question still remains. If you have any better methods than the above mentioned methods, Please comment down below in the comment section to let everyone know. Those are the efforts of Texas farmers and hunters to protect the natural landscape and ensure ecological balance for animals. I think you should try traveling to Texas to visit the wild boars and the reserve and see how they are raised. Are they well cared for? The living environment ensures that they cannot escape to harm the corn farm. What do you think about the issue of wild boar invasion causing damage to crops? Comment number one if you agree with the people of Texas bringing wild boars to the sanctuary. If you disagree about hunting with a bow and arrow, comment number zero. Thank you for watching the entire video. Like and press the channel subscription button to watch the next videos.
The surge in deer populations in the United States has created a series of challenges for farmers and the environment. Deers are herbivores. They gnaw on many different types of plants, from grass to trees and crops. Every year, they often appear in fields, creating a great threat to the crops. Invasive deers can cause about $1.5 billion in damage each year to the U.S. farms. According to estimates by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, this damage includes not only damage to crops, but also affects the infrastructure and the livestock. With approximately 30 million deer in the United States. The population is growing rapidly, creating enormous pressure on the ecosystem and economy. Uncontrolled growth causes growing challenges. As we enter the 21st century, we are facing an unexpected challenge to traffic safety in the United States. Deers cause traffic accidents. The situation becomes dangerous when deers not only invade residential areas, but are also causing many traffic accidents. According to statistics from the U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, referred to as the NHTSA, each year there are about 200,000 traffic accidents caused by deers, with a significant number of death injuries. This not only creates a dangerous situation for traffic safety, but also causes a huge financial waste for the community. The estimated economic loss due to traffic accident caused by deers each year is about $1.1 billion. This cost includes vehicle repairs, medical care, and insurances. Deer's hunting is a popular activity in the United States, especially in rural areas. Hunters often choose areas with many deers, such as forests, grasslands, and farms, to begin their adventures. The hunting process takes place by hunters searching for deers and using hunting tools. If the deer is not dead after the first shot, the hunter will continue until it's dead. Daytime hunting offers many advantages such as better visibility, increased success rates, and a diverse selection of hunting methods. In the United States, many states such as New York, Pennsylvania, Illinois, and Texas offers daytime hunting licenses. However, regulations can vary from a state to another, so hunters should check carefully before setting out. Daytime deer hunting is not only a sport, but also provides unique recreational experiences bringing participants closer to nature and at the same time enjoying the fresh air of the countryside. Night deer hunting in the United States is an effective method of controlling deer populations and protecting farmers' crops. Through the use of large headlights, farmers can easily detect and shoot down harmful deers and their fields. The advantages of this method includes the deer's poor night vision, making them easier to detect. Farmers can also take advantage of time when deers leave the forest to hunt, helping to minimize damage to crops.
However, not all areas in the United States allow night deer hunting. Regulations can vary by state, but typically it always includes licensing requirements, headlight wattage, shooting distance, and a flashlight use. Although this method brings many benefits, it also has certain risks such as the risk of accidents and negative effects on other animals. Therefore, compliance with regulations is important to ensure safety and protect the environment. Night deer hunting is not only a form of entertainment, but also an effective means of managing deer populations. Deer hunting in snowy fields is a popular activity in the United States during the winter. The hunter moves through the snow field, looking for deer tracks, and then uses a rifle to make a hunting shot. This offers many advantages, including being easier for deers to see against the white snow and the ability to reach them more easily. Deer hunting in snowy fields not only provides an enjoyable experience, but also helps control deer populations and maintain natural balance. Licensed in areas with heavy snowfall and large deer populations, the activity requires hunters to comply with specific state regulations. In addition, preparing the right gear for cold weather. Hunters also need to be careful when traveling in the snow and follow state safety regulations. Deer hunting in snowy fields is not only a hobby, but also a responsibility requiring attention and respect for the natural environment. Doing this activity properly will provide a unique experience and protect our natural resources. There are many different ways to deal with invasive deer populations. Now let's go to other areas in the United States to see how farmers are dealing with deer populations. Let's keep watching. Why is the wild beer population growing so rapidly in the United States? They are present in 50 states. About 10 years ago, Americans went camping in the forest and encountered wild bears. Their numbers are very few and they are very scared when encountering humans. They feed them human food. Quite often, they have made them dependent on human food, making them more irritable and angry. They attack people's cars and steal their food. They move towards the city, looking for food from agricultural farms, attacking cattle farms and rummaging through trash cans. The US government had to come up with measures to prevent them. To prevent wild animals from accessing livestock farms, there are some simple and effective ways that we need to do. A first solution is that in outer farm areas, there should be a surplus feed regime for maximum production. Instead of providing too much food each day, Calculate the amount of food needed for the full price to minimize waste and avoid creating an attraction for wild beers.
Minimizing food scraps not only saves resources, but also reduces the number of wild bears in the area. Excess food not only creates opportunities for wild bears, but can also lead to changes in their behavior, as they rely on food sources more easily. By reducing food waste, we can create a safer environment for livestock and prevent wild bears from accessing farms, ensuring that both parties can share the same habitat without causing termites to each other. In addition, using measures to protect animal feed is also an important solution. Solid barns and electric fences can be used to ensure that livestock feed is protected from access by wild bears. This not only protects the feed, but also ensures the safety of your livestock. Fences here will be built around cattle farms and trees. The energy panel system will energize the fence ensuring that there is always electricity for the fence. However, there are some fences that they can still get through. They will try to steal the food, as they are very disappointed. Increased security is another important part of preventing wild bears from entering farm residential areas. Install security cameras to monitor wild bear activity, which can provide valuable information about their presence. So what would you do if you knew a wild bear was nearby? Can you take appropriate security measures? Run as fast as you can and tell people around you about their presence to ensure your safety and everyone else. Please quickly notify the security agency so that they can promptly assist you in handling these situations. Educating people in the farm area about how to avoid wild bears is another important part of this strategy. Awareness of how to respond to wild bears and how to practice safety measures can help create a safer environment for both humans and wild bears in the same area. Just take a quick look at how they handle it to know what you should do if you encounter such a situation. Think about how to handle it yourself and learn skills to protect yourself. In addition to these measures, hunting is also one of the most widely used measures in the U.S. states. It has become an important part of countermeasures against wild bear attacks. This is a task that not only requires professionalism, but also ensures the safety of people in wildlife. In dealing with wild bears, hunters have an important role in finding and capturing them. They are often people with depth knowledge of bear behavior and ecology, along with advanced hunting skills. Hunters are trained to identify wild bear tracks, monitor their expressions, and predict the bear's potential actions. To ensure their safety, 
and the safety of the natural environment. They can place cameras in areas where wild bears often appear to monitor their behavior as well. As well as placing crates of their favorite food so they appear faster. Once the presence of wild bears has been identified in an area, the U.S. hunters often apply careful security measures. Wild bear hunting is a process that requires precision and patience. Hunters use hunting tools and aid safety approach to capture the bears. They will travel in a group so they can promptly support each other during the hunting process. The ultimate goal of hunting wild bears isn't to completely eliminate the species, but to ensure that the wild bears and humans can share the same habitat without posing a threat to each other. American farmers dedicate their time and knowledge to carry out this work carefully and mathematically, playing a vital role in maintaining the balance between humans and nature and the fight against wild bear attacks. What do you think we should do to prevent this bear attack? Please leave all your comments down below in the comment section. And for now, Let's continue watching this video. You know, in Australia we have a bit of trouble with those wild rabbits. Now you might be thinking that rabbit meat might be a good choice for a meal. And actually, you're not wrong, it is delicious and nutritious. But you see, the problem is that we, Australians, especially the farmers, don't eat wild rabbits. Since 1945, feral rabbit populations have grown widely across Australia, to the point where there are approximately 200 million wild rabbits recorded. This creates an uncontrolled situation with major harmful effects on the environment and agriculture. Furthermore, wild rabbits tend to carry a variety of parasites and bacteria, raising concerns about health risks associated with rabbit meat consumption. With their ability to be transmitted to humans, these parasites and bacteria pose a serious threat to the health of people who enjoy eating rabbit meat. To control the ongoing situation, Australians have destroyed millions of wild rabbits after taking measures to poison them. Not stopping there, a series of other measures have been introduced, making rabbit meat one of the meats that Australians hate. Researchers injected rabbits with vaccines before releasing them into the wild, devising a strategy to devastate rabbit populations using biological weapons. These vaccines are only transmitted within the rabbit population and are unlikely to spread to humans or other species. However, transmission within the rabbit population was rapid and resulted in a series of epidemic cases. This makes consuming infected rabbits impossible for Australian farmers, who fear the potential risk to human health. 
eating wild rabbit meat in Australia is a controversial and a multifaceted topic with many different views and arguments. One of the main concerns about the consumption of wild rabbit meat is it is potential to contribute to the growth of feral rabbit populations. Some have argued that eating wild rabbits could make increasing wild rabbit populations extremely difficult and is valid for several reasons. In this situation, hunting of wild rabbits could also create an evolutionary pressure on the wild rabbit population. Strong and agile rabbits are likely to survive in human hunting environments. While weak rabbits, we have to utilize different survival tactics to avoid capture. This could promote the evolution of wild rabbits, creating a wild rabbit population with new survival and reproductive characteristics. A specific example could be developing better hiding tactics or greater speed and escaping a threat. Wild rabbits can develop the abilities to be alert and assist situations quickly to avoid being caught, and these traits can be passed on to the next generation through evolution. In addition, the focus on hunting healthy wild rabbits may also affect the population structure of wild rabbits. Wild rabbit populations can become genetically diverse, as only some rabbits have the opportunity to participate in the reproductive process. This can lead to a loss of genetic diversity and leave wild rabbit populations vulnerable in the face of other environmental changes. Furthermore, wild rabbits are known for their ability to reproduce extremely quickly, raising concerns about the negative impact on the environmental and Australian agriculture. A single wild rabbit can give birth to hundreds of baby rabbits each year, creating an incredible reproductive rate. This means that each wild rabbit can produce a large number of baby rabbits, and when combined with the high survival rate of weak rabbits, wild rabbit populations can flourish. These increased levels not only create concerns about competition with other animals and their natural habitat, but also create problems related to Australian agriculture. With the number of wild rabbits increasing, they can cause damage to crops and farmers' food sources. Predation of wild rabbits can lead to an unwanted increase in feral rabbit populations, making their control more complicated. However, to ensure that eating wild rabbits does not contribute to the unwanted rise of the species, the Australian government has established regulations and limits on hunting wild rabbits. This is intended to control wild rabbit populations and ensure that the natural and agricultural environment isn't unduly impacted. Although eating wild rabbits remains controversial, careful management of wild rabbit populations is an important part of efforts to protect the environment and ensure natural balance in Australia. The smell and taste of wild rabbit meat is often one of the factors that makes it difficult for people to like this dish.
wild rabbit meat often has a foul smell and a characteristic bitter taste, making it an option that is not always popular with people. The smell of wild rabbit meat may come from the rabbit's diet, which includes natural foods, plants, and even carrion. This creates a unique flavor, but also not a dish that everyone can accept. The ability of wild rabbits to reflect the smell of wild rabbit meat to their food is part of its natural process, but it can be difficult for many people to accept. In addition to the smell, the bitter taste of wild rabbit meat is also an annoying point. Bitterness can arise from these substances contained in meat, such as uric acid and other compounds. This makes wild rabbit meat often taste more bitter than meat from other animals. The combination of full odor and bitter taste creates a damp experience and is the reason why many Australians dislike wild rabbit meat. Although there are many ways to soften the bitter taste and remove the odor when preparing wild rabbit meat, the preference for consuming the dish still depends on personal preference. For many people, the choice between wild rabbit and other meats never seems to have a compelling reason to change their tastes. If you eat wild rabbit meat, please let us know in the comment section how does it taste like. Thank you so much for watching this video until here. For now, let's continue watching the rest of the video. Farmers and hunters were very concerned about hunting. Wild boars can attack them if they feel in danger. They gathered many hunters and hunting dogs to catch wild boars for each hunt. Each convoy started going to the forest to hunt wild boars. This pack of hunting dogs will be responsible for searching for wild boars. They will chase and attack if they encounter wild boars. Hunters will also feel much safer with the help of teammates and the support of dogs. They closely follow their dogs, who will split up into different areas to search for traces of wild boars. When discovering wild boars, hunters quickly run back and use hunting tools to catch them. It is not surprising that hunting with the help of hunting dogs causes the number of wild boars hunted to increase. The number of wild boars has also gradually decreased. According to statistics from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, hunting wild boars with hunting dogs is the most popular hunting method. In the U.S. in 2022, about 2.5 million wild boars were hunted with hunting dogs, accounting for about 75% of the total number of wild boars hunted in the U.S. There was a hunter who told a horrifying story, opening a new page in the world of hunting. His teammate had to face the attack of a giant wild boar weighed up to 600 pounds. However, the courage and solidarity of hunters helped them recapture the wild boar, turning it into one of the biggest trophies ever.
this story spread widely and created a new fear in the hunter community. It raises questions about the insignificance of wild boars and their ability to deal with humans. Since this incident, many hunters have felt extremely cautious when conducting their hunts because they understand that in the wild world, danger can always appear from anywhere and anytime at any moment. To avoid being injured during hunting, the hunters came up with the idea of using tents and hiding places to hunt wild boars. It isn't difficult to find areas frequented by wild boars. There are many traces left by wild boars in the forest. First, we will go into the forest, approaching an area with the traces of wild boars setting up tents. This tent has the same color as the trees, so it can be used to hide most effectively. Tents can be used for overnight and camping right in the forest. Construction is quite simple. Just follow the instructions when buying them. Once the tent is set up, now is an important time to prepare food for the journey. To ensure that wild boars have the energy and nutrition they need, building a food tower is an important step. This farm of food pyramid not only saves time, but also helps saving resources instead of having to spread feed directly onto the soil. This can be expensive and inefficient. Instead, use a simple tower to spread even amounts of food throughout every moment of outdoor life. With the tower is easy and convenient installation. You can enjoy convenient and efficient food preparation, ready for exciting journeys and experiences with nature. After preparing the grain tower for the wild boar, the hunters returned to their tents and began waiting for the optimal opportunity to hunt wild boars. This is a painstaking and patient process, requiring perfect concentration and control With their shelter in the tent, the hunter uses binoculars to observe the surroundings and the appearance of wild boars. They know that every caution is necessary, because wild boars have the ability to quickly to detect any intrusion. When the time came, the delicious scent from the food attracted wild boars from afar. They appear from the forest, coming in flocks looking for food. At this point, the hunter is prepared and covers their destination. With amazing precision, the aim that the wild boar's paralysis point, defeating them in the first shot. When wild boars are paralyzed, they immediately fall down and the hunt ends. The use of off-road vehicles of hunting is also very popular. You can drive on any terrain to hunt, which is much safer than setting up a tent. With the vehicle's shape, it can carry a ground of four people hunting together across flat areas. The chance of being attacked by wild boars is almost non-existent. The hunting trip went very well. Herds of pigs were killed with each use of hunting equipment. After being killed, pigs will be brought home for pressing. So the pig will be hung up and the pressing process will begin. The pig skin will be separated vertically from the pig's tail down.
After separating the skin, the internal organs will be also removed. Each piece of meat will be divided and brought into cooking. Almost all wild boar hunters in the U.S. love this dish. However, each person will have different flavors. The meat will be cooked for quite a long time. Wait patiently until you enjoy it. How wonderful! Each piece of meat is tender and very delicious. Have you ever tried the grilled wild boar dish before? Please, let us know about it down below in the comment section right now. And for now, let's take you to another area with more great things. Locusts, our unique insect species, are now becoming a serious threat to crops and socio-economy across continents, including Africa, Asia, and America, even Africa. They gather in millions at breakneck speed and destroy everything in their path. This phenomenon has attracted the attention of the scientific community and environmental managers around the world. The locust epidemic not only causes serious economic damage, but also threatens the well-being of millions of people. They have the potential to destroy crops and increase food shortages and famine, causing instability among farming communities and those who depend on food from agriculture. In addition, locusts also have the potential to cause health problems, including diseases and allergies, affecting people's quality of life. To deal with this threat, the use of pesticides has been considered the most effective measure to destroy locusts. However, it should be noted that this method can cause negative impacts on the environment, so it's important to look for other solutions, including research, on preventive control and use of management methods. Sustainable management is essential to ensure the safety of the natural environment and humans in the future. Sparrows, a bird that favors a variety of seeds and grains, including rice, corn, and beans, are becoming a serious threat to crop yields around the world. The sparrow's ability to cause damage cannot be underestimated, and it threatens the global food and agricultural establishment. Knit traps have become an effective measure to reduce damage caused by sparrows. The operating principle of knit traps is based on luring birds into the net, and they are made from highly durable nets that can withstand the height of sparrows. Knit traps are placed in areas where sparrows commonly occur, such as near rice, corn, and bean fields. However, the harmful effects of sparrows are still great on the fields. According to a report by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United States, referred to as the FAO, sparrows are one of the most common pests of crops in the world.
In the United States and Europe, sparrows cause millions of euros in agricultural damage each year. But in Asia, sparrows cause billions of dollars in agricultural damage each year. So to minimize this damage, the use of knit traps along with other protective measures is extremely important. Sparrows can significantly impact the food and economic resources of countries, and research the implementation of effective protection measures will play an important role in protecting food resources and agriculture. Peasants, a pest present in all fields, are becoming a serious challenge for farmers. Although it is less harmful than some other species, pheasant population are growing rapidly, causing nuisance and damage to farmers. One of the traditional means of controlling pheasants is hunting. However, this method is becoming increasingly ineffective and dangerous. Farmers have realized the value in catching pheasants and raising them as a valuable asset. This has led to a decline in pheasant hunting and opened up a new approach to managing this population. Raising pheasants on their own farms has proven to be one of the best ways to control pheasant populations. It helps farmers control the quality and quantity of pheasants in their controlled environment, minimizing impact on fields and natural food sources. In particular, pheasants raised on farms can become an additional source of income for farmers and help maintain the ecological balance in the area. By catching pheasants and raising them, farmers not only minimize the impact of these birds on their fields, but also create a sustainable solution to the problem. This demonstrates the change in farmers' attitudes and actions while helping to protect fields and the agricultural environment. Not only pheasants, deers are also one of the invasive species across fields in some countries around the world. They are said to regularly destroy fields by eating people's crops, causing billions of dollars in damage annually. This is posing a serious challenge to the agriculture and the economic apparatus of many countries. The government has taken extreme measures such as hunting them to control the situation. Residents and hunters traveled to these areas to hunt deers and their populations were suppressed in just a few years. However, it is necessary to carefully consider whether hunting is the best solution. In this situation, another option we need to consider is moving them to national parks or large natural forests. Instead of eliminating them in an extreme way, we can consider taking advantage of nature to create a more balanced environment for deers. This also helps protecting biodiversity and maintains the environmental balance. 
This problem requires careful discussion and research to find the optimal solution. We should consider all options and listen to the community to ensure that we are implementing effective and sustainable measures in managing deers and managing our resources. And for now, you can leave all your comments down there in the comment section. And lastly, don't forget to share, like and subscribe to the channel so you're always staying tuned with any of our upcoming videos. Farm owners have teamed up with professional hunters to participate in trapping wild boars. There are farm owners who do not have much experience in setting wild boar traps. In the afternoon, the hunter will go to the field area to set traps for wild boars. When they reached the land area, they started building iron fences to trap wild boars. These iron traps range in height from about 3 to 6 feet. They will bring down the mesh frames around the trap and then begin installation. As you can see, the installation is quite simple. However, you need to install it correctly according to the steps above. Until the installation is complete, the worker will install the power line and recheck the joints of the trap. Once completed, the worker will rotate the winch to lift the lower body of the trap and install the remote control. In each trap, the center will be filled with the types of grain that pigs like to eat the most, and then we will wait for the results via camera. Likewise, traps can be placed near each other or in other areas showing signs of feral boar invasion. Let's watch and see how this trap works. You can also see that herds of wild boars are starting to approach because they smell the scent of agricultural products. They are too familiar with the smell of corn in the fields. Each herd of pigs entering will have the leading male pig, followed by the female pigs and their cubs. They are very numerous. You know, during each wild boar breeding season, each wild boar will give birth to about 12 babies per crop. Just like that, the number multiplied, and to date, the estimated number of wild pigs has reached 9 million. Back to the traps. When the pigs enter the trap, monitor the camera. If there are no wild boars around anymore, then the trap will be activated. Perhaps this is the moment you look forward to the most. The pigs ran and then hit the trap hard. The material used to make the trap was very sturdy, so it could block the pig's strength. Every year in the United States, wild boar trapping competitions are held. The contest will be held for a few days to a week. Wild boar trappers from all over come to participate in this contest. You will see the rewards right here. These are people who are very good and skilled at trapping wild boars. They have learned and accumulated experience over quite a long period of time. Vehicles carrying wild boars are parked around a yard. 
Each vehicle will be brought into the weighing area to calculate the total weight of the wild boar vehicle. The person with the highest number of wild boar weights will be the winner and will receive the contest prize. There are many of these pigs that are said to weigh 200 to 300 pounds, a fairly large mass to be ranked among the top giant wild boars. When they were awarded the prize, they said they had been waiting for the contest to take place for a long time. This is also a competition organized for entertainment and to encourage contestants to practice their wild boar trapping skills. In addition to trapping wild boars, hunting is also one of the ways to deal with wild boar invasions. The hunters will gather together and begin their hunting journey. They will learn together and go to a land where many wild boars live, Of course, they will hide in hilly areas. They will go to the highest areas on the mountain and use lenses to observe areas with wild boars. When discovering wild boars, the hunter will calm down and aim at their heads to shoot. This is the point where the wild boar becomes paralyzed and faints immediately. In field areas, hunters will lead hunting dogs to search for traces of wild boar. To be able to have these hunting dogs, hunters had to train hunting dogs for a long time. Furthermore, this breed of dog is also very expensive and difficult to buy. Hunting became easier with the support of companions and hunting dogs. Just like that, until the end of the day, they will collect all the wild boars and return to celebrate. It is estimated that every day in the United States, about 4.5 thousand wild boars are hunted. This is a small number compared to their numbers in the United States. There are hunters who specialize in hunting wild boars from afar, this hunter was in the mountains and shot a wild boar at a great distance. He was very confident with his hunting equipment and made sure to shoot wild boars. Let's take a look at his skills. With just one shot, the wild boar was immediately knocked down. I couldn't believe my eyes. This man chose a high and remote position to be safer and to easily observe wild boars. The times that followed surprised me. His vision and observation are very quick and accurate. The wild boars he saw were all brought down by his skill. Any animal that appeared was attracted. Even the coyote was captured by this hunter. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.